colitis is a common condition that results in diarrhea. There are many causes, including parasites, diet and stress. Colitis is inflammation of the colon, a portion of the large bowel. Your dog may have the urge to pass feces more often, and these can be soft with mucus present, which gives it a shiny appearance. Any ongoing diarrhea will require further investigation. The presence of blood can indicate that the condition is more serious, especially if the dog is showing other signs such as vomiting, lethargy and anorexia. Antibiotics are often needed when there is blood. I never starve dogs that have diarrhoea, as I find that the food helps them with the recovery process as it keeps them hydrated and provides them with much needed energy. However, you do need to change their diet temporarily. Feed small, frequent meals throughout the day around four to six times. Reintroduce the normal diet slowly once the diarrhoea has resolved. I find that chicken is a meat that many dogs have allergies to. So based on that fact, I avoid it when choosing a bland diet. Scrambled egg made without milk, white fish, cooked and mashed sweet potato and pumpkin are all good choices. Complementary products such as Procolin contain pre and probiotics which help improve the numbers of good bacteria in the gut. It also contains kaolin which is a naturally binding agent. It can soothe the stomach lining and firm the stools. Check with your vet prior to use. Did you know that when a dog has a bout of diarrhoea their anal glands can fill up? Adding fibre to the diet or using some products such as Profibre can help to firm the faeces up and help them to naturally express their own anal glands. Some dogs need their anal glands expressed manually. Make sure you get someone that is professionally trained to do this. The signs your dog may show if their anal glands are full include a fishy type smell to their breath, scooting their bottom along the ground, excessively licking and biting around their bottom and tail base, potentially leading to sores on the skin, excessive tail chasing and pain and straining when defecating. Internal expression of these glands can only be performed by a vet or veterinary nurse. Vomiting can cause dehydration to kick in much quicker than diarrhea. So I'm always slightly more worried when a dog has had ongoing vomiting. When it comes to causes of vomiting, well, it could just be a dietary indiscretion. There could be something stuck in their intestine or stomach, or it could be something like an organ problem such as kidney failure. So chronic vomiting always needs investigation. If a dog has vomited more than two or three times in a 24 hour period and they have accompanying symptoms such as seeming lethargic and off their food, then of course that definitely needs investigation. Dogs that feel nauseous may go off their food and become anorexic. Initial measures to encourage eating include hand feeding, warming food to make it smell stronger and trying a change of food to something deemed as tastier. But once again, any dog who is anorexic is at a high risk of becoming dehydrated. So refusal of just one day of food or a dog who is unwell with their anorexia requires a vet visit. One cause of vomiting is if a dog has an obstruction, normally because they've eaten something like a bit of their toy or a tennis ball, for example. The sort of symptoms you might see with those dogs are vomiting even when water is being drunk and any food is being consumed. It all seems to come back up again. And the other thing to look out for is to check if they're actually passing any feces. And if they are, are they of normal size? Because when a dog has an obstruction, especially if it's a partial obstruction, we just see small, scanty, thin type feces coming out. With these dogs, as the condition continues, they'll actually vomit quite offensive material that resembles fecal matter. Of course, these dogs are an absolute surgical emergency, so make sure you get them checked out as soon as you are seeing any worrying signs.